Okay, so I think you can all see the screen. So my research activities are divided roughly into four areas, um, illustrated in those quadrants. Um, I'm just gonna go through a couple of projects in each of those areas to give you an idea of what we've been doing the last couple of years and think about what's gonna be going on in the future. Um, in the area of neurophotonics, a lot of what we're doing is taking advantage of genetically engineered protein indicators to either um, control the uh, activity of, of neural cells in the brain or to image the activity of, of neurons in the brain. Um, so for example, we're developing highly multiplexed implantable optical neural interfaces to take advantage of um, optogenetics, um, which gives us the ability to um, selectively address neurons by subtype as well as through the wavelength of the light that we use for illumination. Um, these devices are based on implantable optical waveguides. Um, I may show a little more detail a little bit later if I get to it, um, but we're trying to take light, deliver it through highly absorbing scattering tissue via implantable optical waveguides. We couple those waveguides to gallium nitride LEDs. Um, we basically build small LED displays, um, connect those to arrays of waveguides and then implant those devices and then look at the spatial temporal control of neural activity. Um, on the imaging side, we're taking advantage of the fact this whole process can be reversed in the sense that we can collect light through that same array of waveguides. And not only can we collect light, can we collect light, we can also collect images. So this is a project with um, Professor Menon um, taking his work in computational microendoscopy and translating that into doing wide field endoscopic imaging in the brain um, using the fact that each of those optical waveguides in itself can generate an image of, you know, fluorescence image of activity in the brain. And then we can produce a composite image by um, combining all those individual images. Um, and this, all this is done via training of convolutional neural networks. Um, another area of research in the group is uh, optical to terahertz light matter interactions. A lot of this is based on ultrafast techniques. Um, two recent projects I'll describe here are based on um, the spectroscopy of perovskite materials, which are highly efficient optoelectronic hybrid organic and organic materials. Um, their big advantage besides high efficiency is very low cost. Um, but there's a lot that we don't know about these materials for um, broader applications beyond photovoltaics. Um, interestingly, some of these materials, the Rodelston popper, um, popper type can uh, form, naturally form multi-quantum well structures. Uh, we can control the thickness of the quantum wells by the number of lead iodide. Um, layers in the structure, but these are not pure phase structures all the time. Um, right? We may, we ideally would want to have quantum wells of, you know, very uniform quantum wells throughout the thickness of the, of the multi-quantum well stack. Um, that doesn't happen. We can have high temperature phase, low temperature phase. We can have mixed phases. So we've used a combination of electroabsorption spectroscopy and more conventional optical spectroscopy to. Um, of the exotonic features of these quantum wells to then determine what the, uh, what the phase composition of these materials are as a function of the quantum well, or I should say the, in, the intended quantum well thickness. Um, and hopefully this will help design better optoelectronic devices in the future. Um, another area is um, taking advantage of um, the uh, splitting of spin current due to uh, breaking of inversion symmetry in these two-dimensional perovskite materials. Um, this uh, definitely gives rise to applications in spintronics. And what we study is the um, selective excitation of these spin currents via ultra-fast optical excitation, and then looking at the terahertz emission from those spin currents. Um, and we do that as a function of, of input and output polarization states, as well as input angle, we can learn more about those materials, as I mentioned, for um, spintronic applications. In the area of UV photonics, um, we've, we've focused a lot on, on UV plasmonics, which is uh, the use of uh, deeply sub-wavelength structures, 
producing a very strong, tightly confined resonance response in the UV spectral regime. Um, some recent work there was looking at the chiroptical response, sort of an engineered chiro chiroptical response of um, aluminum um, nano antennas in the ultraviolet. Um, chiroptical response consists of optical activity and um, absorption contributions. And uh, we have ways of engineering both of those to try to enhance chiral selective spectroscopy, which is extremely important in the UV regime when you're dealing with biomolecules. Um, another kind of related area um, really ties, sort of shows you some of the capabilities we have in our nanofab in terms of surface analysis and imaging is when we make these very small structures. Um, so remember the ultraviolet, we're talking very, very short wavelengths below 300 nanometers. So any type of uh, optical structure that that we build for these wavelengths is, you know, in the tens of nanometers in size. So we need, we need to really be able to do metrology of our structures on the nanometer scale. So um, we do have very nice imaging capabilities um, to be able to do cross section as well as elemental analysis on the nanoscale to see, you know, not just what we thought we made, but to see what we actually made and be able to analyze that and then introduce the results of that analysis into our um, simulation models to better predict the response of those structures. Um, then finally, in the nanophotonics realm, um, some recent work there has been um, looking at um, dielectric multilayer stacks, um, 1D photonic crystals. Uh, we've done this both for visible as well as ultraviolet wavelengths. Um, but very recently, we've looked at the contributions of what we call bound surface waves, which are, are literally bound to a terminating, terminating layer at the top of the um, uh, multi-layer stack, as well as internal modes, which are due, oops, which are due to the um, um, band edge resonances of the uh, photonic crystal. Um, and we found from radiation patterns, very, very narrow radiation patterns produced by Bound surface wave coupled emission, um, broader radiation patterns produced by the internal emission, but also by using a combination, since they produce different radiation patterns in the far field, we can use those radiation patterns to actually determine how far the fluorescent emitter is from the surface of the photonic crystal, uh, which is kind of an interesting kind of three-dimensional imaging capability we have for uh, fluorescent species. Um, another recent project is um, developing some plasmonic meta surfaces to, we're basically building dipole antennas um, on a very small scale, um, making those antennas from different material compositions um, in order to encode grayscale images based on the composition of those dipole antennas. Um, and again, these dipole antennas on the order of 100 microns, or sorry, 100 nanometers in size. Um, very quickly, just run through this uh, neural interface work. The idea is that we can use optical, implanted optical waveguides to deliver light millimeters into tissue, um, which is beyond the typical attenuation depth, uh, largely due to scattering and tissue, of, uh, scattering of light and tissue. We do that by making miniaturized um, indium gallium nitride LED displays. Um, this shows a, a close up of the display coupled to an array of optical waveguides produce a package device. We can then spatially temporally modulate the light pattern produced by that device. Um, we carefully engineer the uh, light projection properties from each of these waveguides so that we project the proper distance in the tissue with the proper intensity. Um, just showing some images there in, um, in a laboratory environment. And then we can implant those in a uh, non-human primate brain um, perform electrical recording and show that we can selectively do at depth excitation and control of neural activity, um, controlled by the, the pattern of light as well as controlled by the intensity of light. Um, so this is one of our major ongoing projects in the lab. So I'll stop there.